Hi there, how are we, how are we all doing? Um, right, uh, let's catch you up then. This one's called Hurry Up, Wait, Wait. And uh, it gives you, <laughs> somebody's asked me, oh, where's all the, where's all the daily posts gone for the, uh, for the Ops Overseas channel? It's like, well, unfortunately, I've had to come back to work. Uh, went back to work in February, came out in July, including a month's unpaid quarantine, which was terrible, a terrible situation. And um, obviously the coffers need refilling. I've had, oh, shift that way around. I've had 79 days off, and in that time, I see from here that we've uh, we've got rid of five deer. We've been camping for two weeks. We've done a local camp. We've done a lot of brewing, some casting, some fishing, some flying of the drone, and some foraging. So it's been very, very busy. Uh, but the the joke's over now. We've had to keep <laughs> so, uh, how did I get here? Right. Okay. Usually, when uh, when you come out here, this is even before the corona days, you got your contract and you signed it and then you got to the aeroplane, you got to the airport, got on the plane and that was about it. But now you have to travel with an insurance certificate, a PCR a day before, flight details, uh, an arrival certificate, um, insurance certificate, and then you have to upload on the phone this thing called a Tawakalakalaka, whatever it is, app, so the Saudi government can track you while you're here. Yeah, not too keen on that, but obviously not to any mischief, so there's no problem. Um, got on the Gulf Air at London Terminal 2, easy flight with some shitty TV and some even shittier food. An impression I have about this corona business is that it's become the, uh, it's become this sort of the excuse for really, really bad service for almost everything. And uh, if things aren't right, well, I'm sorry mate, it's corona. Um, m my food's late, corona. Uh, sorry I didn't see you waving your arms up and down in the restaurant, well that's probably down to corona too. So everyone's using it as an excuse for shitty service. But don't worry about that because, uh, well, pretty soon everyone's going to be stamped and vaccinated. We'll get a grip on this thing. And then there'll be no more excuses. So what else have we got? So yes, got a SIM card. That was about 420 reals, which is under 100 quid for 100 gigabytes of data that will last for three months. So if we get signal, perhaps we can upload a few things. I have absolutely no idea what the situation is with uh, internet signal in the field that we're going to be working in. Um, last time everyone bought either Mobley or STC cards. Some of them worked, some of them didn't. We're in the bin, did they work, didn't work. The ship's allocation is 150 megabytes per 24 hour period. So there's not really a lot of scope to go uploading a lot of things. And uh, anyway, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the situation at the minute. What I'm going to do now is go for a quicky, quick sneaky show round of the camp, the Reazat Accommodation Complex. Right, this is the superior accommodation, the Rezat accommodation complex. It's like the bloody shiny, you have absolutely no idea who's here. Uh, yeah, all a bit weird. <laughs> It's like walking onto a frying pan. And there we go. Yeah, apparently on board the vessel, they, uh, their air conditioning shut itself for a couple of days, which is a bit of a problem because it was 42 degrees. Uh, there's four four tennis courts in case you just want to go and uh, absolutely smash yourself to pieces. And what we have here is a lovely, lovely swimming pool. It looks very inviting. You're not actually supposed to be out and about, but uh, 
it might get to the point where I sneak out for a little crafty dip this evening just because I have something to do more than anything. Anyway, off to the office. How you doing? Lovely, lovely bougainvillea everywhere and bean trees. Now, the last time I was here, just outside, oh, apparently if you uh, if you want to go in the squash court and gymnasium, it's a bit more like Stalagluft Zwanzig with razor wire in there. Last time I was here, there were some magnificent hoopoes, which you don't see too many of in the UK. Uh, so, yeah, let's go and see if we can see a hoopo. It is unbelievably hot. I feel like I'm walking around in front of a hairdryer at the moment. The sun is absolutely beating down. Probably making me wish I'd put a filter on the camera, but not to worry. Now, just on this lawn here, which is all lovely, lovely and landscaped and everything, near this date palm, there was hoopoes last time. No, uh, just little starlings today. But uh, yeah, I know they're here. and another amazingly appealing swimming pool which is a real shame because I don't suppose we're allowed out to use them but uh, we might go sneaky later anyway that water's looking very very inviting this is the main office complex with the uh, with the restaurant that usually we get to use if you ask nicely but at the moment we're supposed to link quarantine so we're not bothering right then well that's uh, me come to the main administration just to find out what's going on about mobilizations and uh, apparently what's happening is we're just waiting for a boat um, as soon as when the boat is known then we're going to get a PCR and then we'll get out of here but it could be another another three or four days so I'm just going to psychologically dig in and uh, stay busy until that time right let's find something to do back out in the burning sun again and uh, I think we're going to head for uh, head for back to the room because it's quarter past one. The sun is almost entirely overhead. It's burning hot, and uh, I think I'm after a cup of tea more than anything. And I failed to find that hoopo, which was a bit nasty. I'm sure he's there somewhere. Lots of other bits and pieces. Anyway, off we go. Usually during a mobilisation, we uh, we get put if we're moving through Abu Dhabi in the Howard Johnson Hotel, which has also the access to the flesh pots and the uh, the meat markets and all the mischief of Abu Dhabi and there's pubs and bars and all the rest of the nonsense. But Saudi Arabia, it's a different ball game. We did used to stay at this place called the Golden Tulip Hotel, which has now changed to the Swiss Continental or Incontinental, as your sense of humour derives. But uh, apparently not doing that, and to save money, instead of sticking us in there so we can get up to even more mischief, they stick us in the camp, which is actually quite nice. There's no, there's no problem with it at all. It's basic, but it's got everything you need. But uh, after about a week of doing absolutely nothing, death by internet, watch as much YouTube as you like, get up at midday, it does get a little bit wearing. And the sight of this swimming pool there, well, that's just torture really, isn't it? Not to worry, we'll survive. Anyway, mad dogs and Englishmen out the midday sun, I'm scuttling back to my room. Well, that was my little foray outside. <laughs> it's 40, 45 degrees, something like that. It's a bit too hot to be messing around. Um, got the information I wanted and came back. Right, let's have a look at this place. This is my internment cell for the next few days and the past four days. Quite nice actually, there's uh, tea and coffee for making facilities, had to ask them for more tea bags, had to ask them for more sugar, uh, which turned up a day later after I've made the fuss. Lovely little long suite, with wet room and all the usual stuff, and if it's been, there's the hose. In a way, more hygienic for this kind of climate. Uh, double bed, weird iPod plug-in dock station, TV with a bunch of American crappy channels, and the view from outside, yeah, dusty trees. Dusty trees and sand and beige colour wall. Beige, you notice, it gets everywhere. So yeah, that's my, uh, that's my bang up for the next couple of days.
Could be worse. Could be worse. Could be worse. Be careful what you wish for.